Hello, good day and welcome to Ogama TV and this is uh, Inubu Connect and today in the studio we have a very uh, prudent man of resources in person of Honorable Frank Ifai Chuku. Honorable Frank, you're welcome. Thank you, Mother. Alright, so uh, Honorable Frank is a pioneer developer of VIOs, MLTs in Enugu and uh, a resource uh, manager to Honorable Toby Okechuku, that's the House of Rep member representing Ogwa, Niri, and Oji River. So we are glad to have you here. And to also note, he's also the MD of Ezio Kubu Ihe uh, Microfinance Cooperative Societies Limited and the MD of Ezio Kubu Ihe Golden Destiny uh, Limited. And I'm Frank, Thank welcome you so once much. again. All right, so uh, today we'll be discussing uh, the issue surrounding the future uh, uh, of Enugu State, looking at how uh, the just concluded elections turned out and uh, the people's uh, yearning for, for change and uh, development. Honorable uh, Frank Ifai Chuku has this initiative that he wants to uh, share with the good people of Enugu State, and uh, the initiative is called Clean Up Enugu Volunteers Initiative. So. Honorable Frank, uh, will you just uh, start from there? What is the idea behind Clean Up Enugu Initiative? Thank you so much, Mona. Okay, well. You see, this uh, Ezekubwe Clean Enugu Volunteer Initiative uh, is something that I'm very passionate about. It's, it's basically about you know coming out in mass and volunteering for the best help you can give to Enugu. And at this point, it's not everybody that can give every kind of help, but this particular one. Is an initiative that is uh, designed in such a way that volunteers can come in to become administrators and learn how to actually get to uh, you know cover like video and record telephone. I mean, I mean, uh, photograph the entire areas that are dilapidated in Enugu with a view to bringing Enugu from a rural setting into a more urban metropolitan setting. Now, when I say it like this. It's like you, you, the first that comes into mind is brooms and shovels and all that. No, this is not it. We'll, oh, we'll get to that point. But at this point, we need to actually take record of what is going on in our state. There's a disaster going on as we speak. The disaster is a sanitation disaster. Because there's no way in any group you go now that you can't see uh, rubbish on the floor. And that is a telltale for disaster. So we decided at the whole committee to, you know, come up with this initiative. Okay, you, let me continue. Okay. Let me chip in. You said uh, Hope Committee. What? Yes. Uh, okay, Hope Committee is, is, a, 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 they are, is an acronym for helping others prosper everywhere. Like myself, I'm, uh, I'm actually a, a, a mandate to the Cardinal Nikon uh, events at the European Union Education. So, you see, we are coming from a point where we have learned so much and we need to actually impact our state from what we have learned. So, uh, going back to the Clean Enugu Initiative. Going back to the Clean Enugu Initiative, what we have on our hands is that we need important people, very, very astute people, people that are full of integrity to volunteer, and then learn how to raise funds. The first training that you will get as a volunteer is the disaster management training to certify you how to on disaster management and give you an international badge. And then from there, the second one will be the international fundraising training that will teach all of us how to actually raise funds. Now, now the, the idea of joining this initiative is something that has become so popular because a lot of people have actually joined us as volunteers and we are intending to split the uh, teams into 17 local governments and then we have to manage from there because the place is so big and it is so important and you see, we have to reform the way we think. We have to start off these campaigns, this uh, sanitation this uh, interest in the clean or cleanliness of Enugu state mm -hmm. and this uh, idea that we as the people need to help Enugu as Enugu state, not just always thinking of what the government must do, but what we can do now. Um, if we all come together and take a video and uh, 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 picture of different places that are dilapidated, that require uh, drains to be covered, uh, uh, public spaces to be plastered, painted and landscaped, flowers to be planted, you see, nobody's going to stop anybody from contributing money to such a cause. And if we all come together with important people, very, very uh, nice and honest people who are leading in the administration of this volunteer action, uh, we are going to be able to raise money 
and we are also going to be able to actually give contracts that we will supervise to restore these locations to standard form. You understand? All right, so uh, that thank you very idea. much. Let me chip in a little bit. You know, this is a very uh, huge project, and a lot of things uh, have been running through my mind since you started talking. Yeah. Talking about uh, getting volunteers, yeah. getting a uh, uh, finance and all of this thing. so how how do you plan to one finance the project to how was the process of uh, uh, getting volunteers or you know, anybody can just from anywhere and it's about any of the states is, yes. is the government in or out of the whole initiative well to me i believe that uh, we are just coming from an uh, election and a lot of people have it in their mind to help the state you see and we have our dear uh, uh, governor elect, who I am so passionate about, you know, trying to go along with his uh, mandate. You understand? So, so this is something that I believe that he is interested. In. And I also understand that he is our. We are also volunteering to the cause that he is uh, championing. Okay. So, so uh, let me go to the second part of the question. For the fundraising, an international fundraising interest is the way to go because anybody can volunteer to help anybody be you an american be you a nigerian or be you an alien anybody who you are you can volunteer to help anybody as long as you buy into the interest so we are going we have created 17 accounts for the 17 treasurers that are going to be nominated now these accounts will be used to manage the fundraising interest and then the secretaries that are incoming are going to be 17 of them now each for each local government then they'll be the coordinators so these people will checkmate each other from the way they will be nominated and you know eventually appointed. So so you know there lies the team that will make it into the hope action committee. Okay, so uh, talking about nomination and uh, eventually uh, appointment, yes. what what are the aspects for nominating? What are the areas or uh, aspects one should? arm himself before okay. yes so. for, for, i understand what your question is quite it's something that we have been very careful to decide okay. see we have a policy now uh, the first policy is that we must train all volunteers on disaster management so first of all you have to be a disaster management professional then secondly you have to be a sort of a, a, a person that is being recommended by a large number of people at least 20 volunteers so when you're coming in and you're intending to be actually a leader in this initiative you have to actually come in with 20 people along with you to recommend you now for you to eventually become a coordinator to to be able to you know uh com compete or contest with the other intending volunteers uh, coordinators in each local government you must come in with 10 trustees that is people captains of industry in your local government that must support you they must be seen to that they support your interest to be this coordinator of this kind of project. So, so they must also, first of all, be interested in at least one fundraiser each for on your behalf. So, you know, at first when we were all discussing this, someone said, uh, perhaps it's this kind of, you're meeting people come to your house. I said, okay, well, fine. But it's certainly much more than that. We're talking about a coordinated action, whereby we, we are, the, are the state apex of this action. We put up letters professionally informing the coordinators on the next steps to follow. You understand? So when I'm talking about the next steps to follow, like the, the person who is going to be coordinator will need to have 10 people. Maybe one person must be a construction company owner, one must be like an industry owner, one must be like the leader of the market and all those kind of stuff. Now, this is designed in such a way that we're targeting the most people that can reach the most people. You understand? So we mustn't take it away from that. That's exactly what it is. So what are we looking at? We're looking at how to affect the entire state on this campaign. Because when you're trying to make people to have a sense of something, you have to respect the people who that, that, that is giving them the information. That's number one. Then number two, the person who is also the coordinator, or who will emerge as any coordinator of any of the local government, which is going to happen in a few days, is, is, is going to actually have a, a, uh, a coordinator's agent in each community of his local government. Now, this person now will receive a letter from us at the uh, Action Committee and uh, telling him to actually scan through their development uh, committees, that is the uh, home and abroad section, whereby they bring information of some of their children, some of their members of the community who live abroad, 
who are the ones that will drive this particular donation that we're expecting, the cleaning up of any room, you know, when you see a video of where you grew up and you're living in America, you're going to be feeling, what, did, what are these people going to do here? And it's a restoration drive. It's something that is happening on its own. It's something that's going to involve, we're not intending to say, hey, we are bringing in new S1. No, it's not about that. What it's about is that when the committee gets information about the location, the committee in turn breaks it down what it will take in cost, in action, to restore this place from a rural location to an urban, more metropolitan location, which includes making reports to the authorities about the expectation of their action there. You know, changing drains, covering drains, you know, opening up more uh, access roads, eh, that is access like there is bush everywhere, clearing it up and restoring the place. Where there are public spaces, uh, uh, plastering the odd location and painting it so that it will be uniform and planting flowers along the line, then having a general view to see that it has come in line with something that someone new can come in and say, wow, this place, <laughs> what's going on? And then when it's happening on a seventeen local government level, you find out that it just happens in a few days and everywhere is sustained, uh, renewed. Oh, you understand that? Right, thank you very so much. Uh, uh, Honorable Ifaye is a pioneer uh, member of VIO's MLTs in Enugu, and uh, we have been discussing clean up initiative, uh, volunteer initiative in Enugu State. Uh, don't forget it's Ugama TV and we are on the Enugu Connect. We will be back shortly after this break. All right, welcome back. And you are watching Enugu Connect on Agama TV. And I'm Emmanuel, your host. And with me in the studio today is Honorable Ifai Chuku, pioneer developer of VIO MOTs in Enugu and the MD of Izoku Buihe uh, Cooperative Societies Limited. And we have been discussing Clean Up Enugu Volunteers Initiative. It's a wonderful project that uh, has a lot of questions running through my mind. So, uh, Mr. Frank, uh, looking at the magnitude of this project, how, uh, uh, what, what are the, the plans you have already put in place and the activities of the initiative in ensuring that uh, the project kickstarts and run efficiently? Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Mario. Okay, I, I want to say thank you for having me on your, on your program. Now, now this, the answer to your question is this, we have already about a thousand volunteers. Yes, yes, about a thousand volunteers have already come in. And uh, right now, uh, we have partnered with our, some of our first volunteers, we are companies, and some of our first volunteers are also in the training institutes and schools in the UK and here in Nigeria. So uh, we partnered with uh, 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 La, La Verse, Metaverse, you know, and uh, Pocket Digital. You know, these are people who have already volunteered to us. These are people that cannot train, and uh, you know they they charge a lot for this training. But they volunteered and they are offering this training for free for now for the first volunteers. So uh, the policy that I have made is that whoever that is a volunteer must first of all benefit by training first, so that you can actually understand what we're talking about and you become qualified to actually serve in that capacity of this initiative. Then uh, moving forward, with the number of people coming on board, we are already certain that this is a, a good one. So what we want to do is to create a position whereby there's integrity. You understand integrity on what in between the members of the action. So we have not actually done the nomination of the leaders because you can't actually give the people a leader that they don't want. So what we're doing now is that we are, we are contacting and connecting the people who are capacity identified that has to be involved with this. So we are hoping and waiting for the governor elect to actually be our good and great volunteer in this. Any moment from now, we get from him. And then we are also talking to people abroad, to international associations, about partnering with them because we have been talking about raising funds to get this done. Now, in principle, whenever you have a disaster happening in a location, it's just the design to stop it and to make things better. That's why people are coming together. So when you have a video of that disaster and you have an interest put up, people that want to help must help. So you want to focus on who will manage this help coming in. 
So that's where we need to, you know, identify exactly who, who, what are the roles of these uh, coordinators, what are the roles of these uh, admin secretaries, what are the roles of these admin treasurers, and who are they working for. So we are the cooperative. We have been handling those all along. You understand? And when you're talking about the government section, the trustworthy section, you're talking about where you can give someone a loan and where you can actually, you know, expect the person to pay the loan without issues. So I have, for one, witnessed a lot of important people, people who are not cheap thieves, normally nice gentlemen and ladies. So this is what gave me the cops to know that there are good people in England who are able to actually manage money without having issue with them, who, who are trusted by the community already, who we just have to find out where they are, approach them or ask them to volunteer. Some of them have volunteered already. But these policies we have put in place will actually and literally pop up the, the leaders amongst them at the end of this season. So the posting has happened. So eventually, maybe uh, in uh, tomorrow, we're going to have our call so that people will call in and vote and uh, actually nominate the the uh, the coordinators. So from the number of nominations that we got, we will find out the the occurrence of different people and their names. That is how we will select it. We will work it on a transparent process. The transparency of the process is that we have policies, for example, anybody that is turning up as a secretary will have this uh, secretary's uh, journal published every three days. The people that are popping up as uh, treasurers will have their accounts, uh, the, the account that they are going to be working with to receive funds and to uh, receive donations. And their uh, donation list, whether it be it in kind or in cash, will be published every day by 8 p.m. Now, the fundraising, the international fundraising interest proper will happen around the world. We're going to, we have developed packets that will engage people to actually, you know, deploy and become volunteer specialists wherever they are, be it in UK or USA. And then we're going to ask in cash donation, in kind donation. We're going to ask for donations, for dumpsters, for sweepers, for uh, sweepers, compressors. We're also going to ask for cars, for uh, laptop phones. You know, basically, whatever it would take to set up the local government, uh, uh, the LGAs of this volunteer action. And this will be done internationally. And I believe that based on the record of what we have, people will be moved to actually make these donations. And then, coming to the welfare of the people who are going to literally either support the existing structure or create uh, or actually pay workers to to um, do the needful in restoring the locations that we are all, talk we are all talking about. Uh, there are, there's going to be a, a kind of uh, a percentage of the donation coming in, just a low percentage to deal with the stick and the logistics, but it will be in the policy that is handled at the whole committee, action committee level. And the action committee will be made up of just the, the three uh, leaders at the local government, and there will be 51 of them. And then, first of all, uh, let me con continue from the last one so that I can, I can finish. The action committee were expecting other volunteers that are companies to come in and express their interest to actually host them because we must hold a workshop, a pu public lecture symposiums, and we must launch their materials. That is the materials for the campaign for this sensitization that was happening in and, and therein lies how we are going to trickle the situation down into the local government. To the communities, and we expect that the attitude not change will happen, and we expect that the people will now have a mindset of a cleaner in the world. All right, uh, thank you so much for such uh, insight. Uh, but there is another angle to it that uh, I was hoping to hear you talk more. Oh. You know, in Enugu, looking at the way uh, Enugu has become in the last few years, a lot of people have come into Enugu, and uh, more or less, a lot of uh, this increase in. Uh, Proper disposal of waste on a daily basis, even on the main road and all of it. So, if you, if if your team gets to these areas, clean up these places, uh, what uh, measure will you uh, put in place to ensure that these places remain uh, as clean as uh, you have put them? Because you may clean and go, and tomorrow you come, you see something was done. So, oh, okay. what, what, Thank what, what are the we're not just talking about cleaning; we're talking about restoring some. Okay. If you want to restore a place, if you had three dumpsters there, volunteers might put additional five. You understand? For you to do that, you have to follow process and protocol. You need to connect to the Ministry of Environment, 
going to the other test farm, advise them, they need to agree. And then when that happens, you see you have done something. So in order for it not to happen, we are expecting more volunteers that are paramilitary volunteers to be you know connected like the man who was. Now I'm saying this from experience. When one was asked to guard the place, maybe it's a dumpster, and then they're asked to position someone to watch the location. Anybody that comes to throw away their tiller that is or come to open it up will be caught and handed over to SWAM directly. So what, what what we need to do is to understand that the volunteers need to actually pay for these things. Even if we are connecting manuals, we need to actually make contributions and pay for them. But in essence, when a community comes out to literally handle something, it will be hard for that same community to still come out to destroy it because it will become a trophy for them. You understand? So, but 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 uh, I I would like to correct an impression. Putting dog sites in this in the road is not the best way. The best way is that every community or location or street needed to have their own dump plot where they take their plot, their uh, refuse to. The road zone is just meant for people using cars and pedestrians to put dirt in there. Not the entire community carrying all their dirty from their house to the road. That was a mistake. What we expect to do is to inform the whole state about that particular position so that they can understand it. And then we will probably write an advice letter or instruct or whatever that we will do to inform whoever that is holding these positions to know that it is time to actually research and find out how to actually create these new dump sites so that our health will be safe, our sanity will be safe. We can comfortably invite people to our state without hoping that the person will say, Chai, this is a rural area, which is what we saw while business partners are coming into a new throughout the whole past. But I have a belief that this incoming government, with the interest it has and the leadership of Dr. Pitamba, is going to do well. Is going to actually help us to address these issues. So we are hoping that we, as a people, will do the best we can to help any mistake. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Ifani Frank Chuko. Uh, Honorable Frank is a pioneer developer of BIOMLTs and a resource manager to Honorable Toby Okechuko, the House of Rep uh, member representing Ogwani or Chi River constituency. And that has been our time for the program, and we uh, we, we have had a quality, a hard quality time with uh, Honorable Frank Chuko. But before we go, uh, Honorable Frank, are there uh, few things you want to point yes. out? Yes, or, yes. So that for want of time, All right. I want to call upon the governor elect to, to volunteer into this cleaning initiative because of he is the last piece of the puzzle. And I also want to call on all well-meaning and boosted people in uh, at home and abroad. I want to call upon anyone who has ever had anything to do with Enugu, whether be it you went to school in Enugu, be it your friend, your mother, your sister, whoever that is related to you is having any connection with Enugu. I want you to volunteer. We have to go by our numbers. And if there is any other thing that I would ask, I would ask that we begin from today to have a mindset that together we can do it. Together we can join. Uh, uh, Dr. Pitanda in his idea of destructive innovation. So uh, I dare to announce that we need volunteers to come in for our public lecture, to sponsor them, to sponsor our state committee, and also to go in with our, our interest at the swinging to destructive innovation. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Honorable Ifani Frank Chuko. And that is all for today's edition of Enugu Country. Don't forget to watch Nogama TV. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Thank you.